Hi guys, my name is Vivek and this is the second video tutorial in the video series indexing in Oracle. If you have not watched the first video, I will highly recommend that you go ahead and complete that first. You will be able to appreciate this video in a better manner once you have completed that video. I have another request. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, please go ahead and do it now so that you get a notification as soon as I upload a new video. Now let's go ahead and understand what we are going to learn in today's tutorial. The first thing that we are going to discuss is when should we go ahead and create an index. The second thing we are going to talk about is the difference between simple and composite index. We have already learned the difference between visible and non-visible index and usable and non-usable index in my previous tutorial. In this video we are going to talk about simple and composite index. Then we are going to understand the relevance of order in composite index. It's very vital that you carefully choose your ordering in composite index and we will see why that is so important. And then we are going to talk about the index scan methods. We have five scan methods, index unique scan, index range scan, full index scan, fast full index scan and index skip scan. We are going to discuss all these five methods in detail. Now let's go ahead and see the scenarios where we should go ahead and create index. The first scenario is when your index columns are queried frequently and only a subset of the data will be returned. So guys, I've explicitly specified this in my first tutorial as well, that if you have a large table and you plan to access only five to 10% of the data, then only index are useful. If you plan to access 60% of the data, 70% of the data or 35% of the data, in that case, indexes are not going to help you. Rather, it's going to go for full table scan. If you plan to access medium level of data, let's say 30 to 40% of the data, you may want to consider partitioning your tables if your table are huge. I've created a video series on partitioning as well. If your business requirement says that you want to access medium level of data on a frequent basis, you may want to consider partitioning. The second scenario, which is very frequently avoided by developers is when you have a parent child relationship, that means when you have a foreign key constraint relationship, you should go ahead and create an index on your child table as well. Because if you go ahead and update the parent table primary key or merge the parent table or delete a row from the parent table, your entire child table will be logged. And guys, this can actually result in a lot of failures. For example, you have a foreign key relationship and your parent table primary key was updated for some reason or deleted from some reason. It's going to lock your entire child table. Say it has a million rows and there are 10 concurrent operations that are trying to actually lock your child table. In that case, you can have failures in your warehouse and OLTP systems. And I've seen a lot of tables in a lot of systems where developer didn't consider creating an index on the child key because they never thought that the parent table will be updated. If you think that the parent table primary key can be updated or can be deleted, you should definitely go ahead and create an index on your child table. What exactly is a simple index? When you are creating an index on a single column, that's a simple index. But if you are creating an index on a combination of column, that's called composite index. And we are going to see in a moment in our SQL developer, why ordering of index is so important in composite index. So let's go ahead and switch to our SQL developer and we will see why it's so important. So here I'm going to create a table index demo and I'm going to select the data from all objects. The table has been created. Now what I'm doing is, I'm creating a primary key constraint on this particular table and I'm choosing four columns, owner, object name, object type and object ID. So I've added the primary key constraint, the table has been altered. Now, as soon as I go ahead and create a primary key constraint in the background, it's going to add a composite index on these four columns. So if I go ahead and verify that from my all index columns, it's going to show me that an index has been created. There is one other important thing to note. I can go ahead and create another unique index on the column object ID. That means though I have created a composite index using this column object ID, I can still go ahead and create another index explicitly on this particular column. In fact, if I want, I can go ahead and create another index using these three columns or these two columns. That means there is no restrictions. A particular column can be used in multiple index as well. Now in my PowerPoint presentation, I mentioned that the ordering is very important in composite index and we will see why. 
So here I have a query where I'm trying to identify the details from the table index demo where the object name is dual and I'm getting these two rows. Now I saw that when I created this primary key an index was created on this column as well a composite index. Now I'm going to see whether Oracle optimizer is going to use that particular index or not when I'm going to execute this particular query. So let me go ahead and create the explain plan and let's see if it's going to access that particular index or is it going to do a full table scan. So if you see here it did a full table scan and the reason behind that is the ordering of the columns in my index. So if you see owner is at the first location in the index object name on the second object type on the third and object ID on the fourth. So my Oracle optimizer could not identify this particular object name directly from that particular index. But if I go ahead and add owner to my query and if I run the explain plan for that it's going to include my index. Now my Oracle optimizer has started doing an index range scan and based on the keys retrieved from the index it did a table access. So if I had only object name in my query predicate the index was not used but if I added owner in my query predicate the index was also used. That means the ordering of the columns is very important in my index. Here if I specify all the four columns in my query predicate in my where clause there the index will be used or if I specify the first three columns the first two columns or only the owner tab if Oracle finds it feasible that the index will be useful it's going to go ahead and use that but if I try to specify only these two columns in my query predicate object name and object type there is a good chance that Oracle will not go ahead and use the index. When you are creating composite index you want to make sure that you see in future what type of queries you want to run and what will be the columns from your composite index that you want to access frequently you should go ahead and create your composite index in that order. Now let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation and discuss index scan methods in detail. Index scan method is a method to retrieve a row by traversing through the index column values. So if I go ahead and issue a query and if my Oracle optimizer thinks that using the index is going to provide me an advantage and faster retrieval, what exactly will happen? It's going to go ahead and access the index root from there it's going to traverse to the lower branch blocks and from there it will finally traverse the leaf blocks and it will retrieve all the locations where the data is stored on the physical table. So it will go ahead and do a table access by index row id and if you see in my last tutorial as well I have mentioned this particular b3 index. So if I go ahead and try to find the details corresponding to employee 1 to 1000 what's going to happen oracle optimizer it's going to start traversing this index from the root column from there it's going to identify that it needs to go to the lower branch levels on the leftmost side so it's going to access this particular branch block and from there it's going to access this particular leaf block to actually gain the row ids where the data is physically stored on the table. So this is how the access is going to start it's going to start here from the root block from there it's going to traverse to lower branch levels and finally it's going to traverse one or more leaf blocks to obtain the row id where the data is actually stored in the physical tables and then it's going to access my physical table to obtain the data and provide it to the user. The lowest level of nodes that actually contains the physical location are called the leaf block while the nodes that only contains the pointer to the leaf block are called the branch blocks. Now let's switch back to our SQL developer and see all these methods in action. So I am going to create a table trans underscore demo with three columns. The table has been created it has id salary and department number columns now i'm going to insert one lakh rows in this particular table the data is being inserted the table has been created and the data is being inserted now i'm going to create a unique index on the id column the index is being created now i'm going to see that if i want to retrieve a particular row based on id 10 whether my index will be used and if it is used what kind of scan method will be applicable. So if I go ahead and see the explain plan for this 
it's going to do a index unique scan because I have created a unique index on my ID column. So the Oracle optimizer knows that it's going to retrieve a single value. That's why it did an index unique scan. So whenever you have created a unique index on a column or multiple columns, and if you specify those columns in your query predicate, as soon as Oracle finds the first value, it's going to retrieve the results because it knows that this particular index is a unique index. It will not have multiple values. So what exactly happened as soon as the Oracle optimizer started scanning the index and it found the first value, it knew that that's the only value that's going to persist in that particular index. It found the row ID corresponding to that from my physical table and it gave me the answer here. Now the other important thing to note here is that I can specify any ID. So earlier it was 10. Now it's 1000. The cost associated with this scan is going to be the same. That's because it's a balance tree index. So it doesn't matter that which particular ID you are going to scan. It's going to traverse the same number of blocks and the cost associated will stay the same. So here the cost is one and the number of rows being retrieved is one. That's going to stay the same here as well. So if I run this particular query, I will see that the rows returned are the same and the cost associated is also the same. Guys, there is one other important tip that I want to give you here right now is that though I have created a unique index, I have not created a primary key on this particular column. That means unique index can still contain null values. So if I go ahead and try to take the count of this particular table, instead of using this particular index, it's going to do a full table scan. Let's verify that quickly. So I ran an explain plan on for this and it did a table access full, which is a very costly operation. You see for this particular case, the cost was one here. The cost is 68 and it's retrieving all the row and then doing a sort aggregate. So guys, if you are certain that a particular column will always be unique and it will not have any null values ever. It's a not null column. You should explicitly go ahead and specify that as not null so that whenever you create a unique index and run a count on that particular table, instead of doing a full table scan, it will go ahead and use this index. So what I'm going to do here is I'm quick. I'm going to quickly drop this particular table and make the ID column as not null. So I'm going to drop this particular table and make this column not null. So I'm creating the table and inserting the data again. Now, when I go ahead and create the unique index on this particular table and run the explain plan for the same counts, it's going to start using the index. It should ideally go ahead and start using the index because it knows that it's a not null column and has only unique values. So earlier it was doing a full table scan. Now it's doing an index fast full scan and we will see in a moment what exactly index fast full scan is. But trust me guys, if you have a primary key constraint or if you have created a unique index and specified that particular column as a not null, whenever you run a select count for that particular table, it's going to be very fast. It's not going to do full table scan, rather it's going to do a fast full index scan on that particular unique index. And what exactly is index fast full scan? Let's go ahead and see that. So as I mentioned that index physically stores the data on the disk and is redundant information. So if this particular table is my transaction demo table, these blue are the blocks and these green represent the rows. When we are doing fast full index scan, the query is not going to access this table at all. Rather, it's going to pull the entire data from this particular index itself and it's going to do a multi block read. So if you have seen my previous videos, I've explained that index actually ideally do a sequential read while when we are doing full table scan, it's a multiple block read. Almost 128 blocks are read at a single time. When we are doing fast full index scan, the same is going to happen. We are going to do a multi block read, but that is being done only on this particular index. That means when we are scanning this particular index, it will be very, very fast. And there is a prerequisite for fast full index scan. All the columns accessed in that particular query in the select clause should be part of the index. 
So for example, if I'm selecting four columns as a part of the queries, all those four columns should actually be part of my composite index. If even one of the, if even one of those columns is not part of that particular query, my fast full index scan is not going to happen. And the other important thing is there should not be no ordering clause. Oracle optimizer should be able to access the data randomly. And we will see with another example where I'm going to use fast full index scan on a composite index. So let's go ahead and switch back to our SQL developer and see with another example how fast full index scan is going to work. So here, if you remember, I have used these four columns in my primary key for the table index underscore demo. Now I'm trying to retrieve only these four columns, but I'm not going to use any order by clause. I just want to retrieve these four columns. So when I go ahead and execute the explain plan for this particular query, though I'm selecting the data from index demo, it's not going to even touch that particular table. It will retrieve the entire data from my index. And let's see how that's going to happen. So if you see, it's not even accessing that particular table. Instead, it's doing an index fast full scan. That means it's reading the entire data from the index itself. And there is a prerequisite, as I mentioned, that all the columns that I'm selecting as a part of this particular query should be part of my composite index. If I go ahead and add an additional column here, it's not going to do an index fast full scan. Let's quickly verify that. So I have added another column data object ID. If I go ahead and run the explain plan for this particular query, it will do a table full access and it will not use the index. That's because this particular column is not part of my composite index. So my Oracle optimizer doesn't have any option but to go to my table and retrieve this particular column as well. So the prerequisite for fast full index scan is that all the columns that you are selecting should be part of my index. We saw in this particular example, all these four columns are part of the index and in our count example as well, I just wanted the count of that particular row. And since the Oracle knew that it's a not null column and I've created a unique index on that particular column, instead of taking the count from the table, it went ahead and took the count from that particular index using a multi block read because there was no relevance of the ordering. It just wanted to take the count. We discussed two things as of now, index unique scan where Oracle knows that as soon as it identifies the first value, it's going to go ahead and return that particular value because it knows that that column is unique and it will not have any duplicate values. So as soon as it finds the first value, it's going to go ahead and retrieve the results. Then we talked about fast full index scan. All the columns that are part of my query should be part of my index as well. If that's not the case, fast full index scan is not used and there should not be any order by clause. Oracle should be allowed to actually do multi block read. And if we specify a ordering clause, that's not going to happen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce this order by clause as well, where I'm going to order by the owner column. If I'm going to go ahead and do this, Oracle actually cannot retrieve the data in a random order. It wants to retrieve the data in a sorted order by owner column. So it cannot do a multi block read. It's going to go ahead and do a sequential read. If I go ahead and execute this particular statement and see the results, I will see that it did a index full scan. So here also it did not go to the table. It actually retrieved the entire data from the index itself. But earlier we were doing multi block read, which was almost 128 times faster than sequential read. So it's a fair statement to say that fast full index scan is very fast in comparison to index full scan, but index fast full scan can only be performed in certain conditions. All the columns, that are part of your select query should be part of your index as well. That's common for index full scan as well. But if you want to retrieve the data in a particular order, you cannot go ahead and do multi block read. In that case, instead of using index fast full scan, Oracle is going to use index full scan. So here I'm retrieving these four columns that are part of my composite index. But since I'm ordering by a particular column, instead of doing index fast full scan, it's doing index full scan. And guys, there is another prerequisite that the ordering 
should be done on the columns of the composite index for example if i go ahead and use object id it will not do an index full scan rather it will go ahead and do index fast full scan and it will go ahead and do sort it on top of that so it so earlier it did a multi block read and it got all the data in my memory and after that it sorted that data on the basis of object id so there are two conditions for index full scan all the columns that i am retrieving as a part of my query should be part of my composite index as well and in my order by clause i should use the columns as taken in my composite index it should actually simulate the ordering of my composite index if i try to alter that particular order instead of doing an index full scan it's going to do a index fast full scan and retrieve the results in memory and on top of that it's going to do a sort order by so as of now we have discussed three methods the first one we discussed was index unique scan the second one we discussed was index fast full scan and the third one we just discussed is index full scan and we discussed the prerequisite requirements for those as well now let's go ahead and discuss index range scan and index skip scan so here in this particular query i am trying to access all the rows where id lies between 1000 and 2000 that means this particular query is going to return multiple rows now if i go ahead and compare the amount of rows returns with the entire table data since it still lies between 10 to 20% or less than 20% it should ideally go ahead and use my index in order to retrieve these particular rows so if i go ahead and run the explain plan for this particular query it will go ahead and use index range scan that is because it actually has to retrieve multiple rows so in my index unique scan it only had to retrieve a single row that's why it was doing a index unique scan now in this particular case it anticipates that there are 463 rows between 1000 and 2000 that are to be retrieved by this particular query that's why instead of doing index unique scan it's going to do a index range scan so what exactly it's going to do let's go ahead and go back quickly to our powerpoint presentation and see that so what exactly happened oracle optimizer actually started its search from the root block then it knew that in order to search all those values it needs to go to this particular branch block and in case of my index unique scan it went and traversed this particular leaf block and as soon as it found the first key its search was over it went to the table to get the address but that's not the case with index range scan it's going to continue traverse all the leaf blocks till all the data that is to be retrieved from this particular query will be done for example if i want to retrieve rows between 500 and 1500 it has to traverse this particular leaf block since it only contains data till 1000 it will have to go ahead and traverse the next leaf block as well as soon as it sees the last key 1500 or the stop statement it's going to stop its search in the index and it will go ahead and retrieve the data corresponding to these particular row ids from my tables now the final method of index scan that we are going to discuss is index skip scan so i have mentioned that ordering is very vital in composite index but oracle can still go ahead and use a composite index even in a case if i have not specified the first column in my query predicate for example here in this case i have a table with four columns id name region and status and i have created a composite unique index on the columns region and id region comes first in my composite order and the id is the second column if i go ahead and run my particular query that i want to retrieve the data corresponding to id is equals to 1 though initially i mentioned that in this particular case oracle will go ahead and do a full table scan because id is not my first column in my composite index there is a situation in which oracle still can go ahead and use this particular index and that is called index skip scan the prerequisite for that is that your first column should be of low cardinality it should have very low values for example in this particular case region has only two values emia or ap while id is a column with 
high cardinality it can have multiple values 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 now what exactly happens in index skip scan in the background i will show in a moment using my sql developer so here i have my customer details idx table and if i query this particular table on the basis of customer id 1 what exactly will happen in order to implement index skip scan oracle will actually break this into two statements for first one it will add region is equals to ap and the second one will be region is equals to emia now it can actually go ahead and implement the index now if you go ahead and run these two statement oracle will actually go ahead and utilize the index so if i go ahead and run this particular query oracle is going to do a index unique scan and the same is going to happen for the second query as well so in order to implement index unique scan oracle is going to divide my query and add a particular predicate in the background it's not, none of this is visible to us but when doing the processing oracle is going to do that and this can only be achieved when your first column is of low cardinality if it has lot of values oracle is going to do full table scan and it's not going to do index skip scan unfortunately in certain circumstances even though your first column is of low cardinality there is a chance that instead of doing index skip scan oracle is going to do full table scan if it finds that that will be more efficient instead of doing index skip scan it's going to do full table scan you can go ahead and try to force index skip scan using oracle hints and i will talk about oracle hints in a later video for now let's go back and quickly recap what we have discussed in today's tutorial initially we started with when we should create index we talked about two situations if you plan to access the index column frequently in your queries and you only plan to access a limited amount of data 5 to 10 percent you should go ahead and index that particular column or those columns the second thing we discussed is that if you have a parent child relationship if you have a referential key integrity constraint relationship you should go ahead and create an index on your child table if you have not created that particular index if you go ahead and update your parent table if you merge your parent table or you delete a record from your parent table the entire child table is going to get locked and that can cause a lot of issues it can cause deadlock and failures then we talked about simple and composite index if you are creating a index on a single column that's a simple index if we are creating an index on multiple columns that's composite index we talked about the relevance of order in composite index we also saw an example of index skip scan then we talked about the different index scan methods how oracle actually utilizes the indexes to access data from my table it will go ahead and start accessing the data from my root block then it will traverse to lower branch blocks and finally to uh, one or multiple leaf blocks in order to retrieve the addresses from where it will go ahead and access the data in the table then we talked about index unique scan when oracle knows that a unique index is being created on the column so as soon as it finds the first value in the leaf node it will go ahead and fetch that particular value from the table and display it to the user then we talked about index range scan if we have multiple values to be retrieved oracle will go ahead and read all the leaf blocks till it finds the last value or till it sees the stop sign then only it's going to get stopped and finally it will go ahead and fetch the results from my table then we talked about fast full index scan in two categories when we were obtaining count from a table that has a column with unique index and explicit not null mentioned that it went ahead and used fast full index scan that means it performed a multi block read on my index instead of performing that on my table which is very fast and the other case in which we can go ahead and implement fastful index scan is if we are retrieving all the columns that are part of the index and there is no ordering on that column in that case in that case oracle optimizer will go ahead and use fastful index scan then we talked about full index scan which actually happens if the columns that are being retrieved in my select query are part of my composite index and the second prerequisite is that if we are fetching those particular data in a particular manner that matches with the ordering of my composite index we saw that and then we talked about index skip scan if i have a composite index and instead of using the first column of my composite index i'm using the second column oracle still can utilize that particular index in certain situation 
but the prerequisite for that is that the cardinality of the first column should be very low it should have very low values so we saw that when we only had asia pacific and emia values in my region column it went ahead and split it that query in background and executed them separately in order to retrieve the results guys still there is a lot more to come when we talk about index but hopefully you are getting excited about all these tutorials you are getting a hang of index in the next tutorial we are going to discuss b tree index in detail and the various types of b tree index if you have any question regarding these tutorial just drop in a comment and i'll try to answer it as soon as possible thanks a lot guys for watching this particular tutorial and i'll see you in the next one